Section three is about financial securities. The first type we're going to talk about is common stock, and this is the basic form of ownership in a corporation. With common stock, you have the right to vote on important company issues and the right to dividends. I want to bring up the book for a second and show you some of the rights because I like the way the book goes into detail on the rights as a stockholder. So when you invest and in, in get common stock, you're going to have voting rights. And that's one thing that preferred stockholders don't have is the voting rights. Here's what your stock certificate or what a stock certificate looks like. Common stockholders have the right to dividends and they have the right to dividends after preferred stockholders get their dividends. When you invest in stock and then the stock price rises above what you invested it for, this is called a capital gain. And it talks about the Peloton bike and how the price of the stock went from $30.60 per share to $148.75 per share because people were trying to work out from home. This is really an attractive uh, feature of being a common stockholder. The only problem is you don't really, there's no guarantee that it will rise. And if you have, if it falls, it would be a capital loss. Preemptive right. So if a corporation decides to issue new stock, Common stockholders have the right to purchase new shares to keep their ownership. So if you own 5%, then the preemptive right will give you the right to purchase 5% of the new share, shares. So if you want to keep your percentage of ownership, you would have the right to do that. I also want to mention that this these the conditions under which condition uh, existing stockholders have preemptive right is going to vary among the states and it has to be identified in the corporation's charter the right to a residual claim on assets so if the corporation goes out of business stockholders are going to have the right to their share in what's left over after all the claims have been satisfied. In other words, if a company goes out of business, they're going to have to pay any back taxes, legal expenses, wages owed to workers. They're going to have to pay their debtors um, or their debts owed to creditors before you can get any claims as a stockholder. So there may not be anything left over, but if there is, that is a benefit there. Now, preferred stockholders, they get preferential treatment. That's why it's called preferred. So they have a claim on assets like common stockholders, but they're going to get theirs before common stockholders. That's why they're called preferred. So, with common stock, there's an unlimited amount of dividends that they could get, but preferred stockholders, there's usually a stated amount. So, preferred stockholders are usually going to get a, a, a certain amount, whereas common stockholders could get a lot more. They have the chance to get a lot more. Let's say preferred stockholders are going to get ten thousand dollars and let's say a co company is going to pay out a hundred thousand dollars of dividends well preferred is going to get theirs first which is an advantage but they're going to get ten thousand because that's what's stated so that means that common stockholders are going to get everything else so there's no limit as far as what common stockholders could get 
In my example, they would get 90000 Okay, and then it says a corporation can't pay any dividend to its common stockholders unless it gets paid full stated dividend on its preferred stock. But, uh, like it says, that it says that there's no guarantee that any dividends will pay, be paid because a corporation has no legal option. Okay, um, in accounting, we talk about a cumulative feature for preferred stock. Let's say that you're supposed to get 10000 and I, the company's only issuing 5000 well, let's say 3000 this year. Well, they, if it's cumulative, it still owes 7000 So, I still owe them, so I would accumulate that, and when I'm, pay, when I'm able to pay it, I will make sure that they get that before common stockholders get anything. So, it's like a running tab. And all of this is covered in the PowerPoint. All right, now let's talk about bonds. So instead of issuing stock, a company may want to raise funds by issuing bonds. Bonds are a formal IOU issued by a corporation or a government entity, and it can come in many different forms. Now, we talked about dividends and how companies do not have a legal obligation to pay dividends. With bonds, a company does have a legal obligation to pay interest. So, they pay the bondholders the interest. They have to pay that, and then they have to repay the par value of the bond when it matures. When, let's say, a corporation d defaults on a bond, well, the only way you can try to recover that is through bankruptcy procedures, and maybe you will get some of the ba that back. It's not guaranteed, so there is a little bit of risk there. Bonds can also be sold to other investors before the maturity date and the price when they sell these to other investors may not be what's what is on the bonds or what is known as the bonds par value it may fluctuate based on the market so if the market price is above the par value then that those bonds can be sold at a premium they can be sold a little bit higher but let's say the market price is lower than the par value. Well, they may have to put, they may have to lower the price of the bond to sell it, and they would this would be a discount. Coupon rate is expressed as a percentage of the bond's par value. This is the interest paid on the bond. Then the current yield is the amount of interest earned on the bond, and this is expressed as a percentage of the bond's current market price so current yield remember is the current market price it's going to be based on that we also have convertible securities and this is where a bond or a preferred stock share can be converted to a common stock so this gives this is a good feature for an investor because they can hold this bond and then when they see the price of the stock rising, they may want to um, convert it to common stock. What this does for the company that issues the bond is when they do convert it to common stock, they, they don't have to pay that interest on the bond. So they save some interest there. But other existing stockholders may not like this because you have more common stockholders which would dilute their share of ownership so like i said this is a benefit to an investor who has one of these because they can sit on the bond or the preferred stock and wait for the prices to rise or they can buy they can convert them as they see the price rise 
Financial diversification is a strategy of investing in a variety of securities in order to reduce risk. We don't want to put all of our eggs in one basket. We want to diversify. That way, if one investment is, goes bad, we have other investments to counteract that. Another a, or a way to do this is through a mutual fund. And this is an institutional investor that raises funds by selling shares to investors and then using the funds from that to buy a portfolio of many different securities. There are close-in funds, which is a fixed number of shares that are issued and, and they invest the money from them, or an open-ended fund. And the open-ended fund issues additional shares when the demand increases and redeems old shares when the investors want to cash in. One of the features of mutual funds is diversification can be done at a relatively low cost. It can become quite expensive if you try to diversify yourself. So this is a way to do this at a low cost. Professional fund management is appealing to investors because Investors usually lack the time and the expertise to make those complex investment decisions. The variety of mutual funds make it easier to find one that matches your investment goals and philosophy. And it's also easy to withdraw funds from a mutual fund. And net asset value per share, this is the value of the mutual fund securities and cash holdings minus any liabilities divided by the number of shares of the fund outstanding to kind of give you a, a an amount there there are some drawbacks to mutual funds investors have to pay a variety of fees and they're usually one to three percent of the amount invested there are some tax consequences associated with the financial gains in these actively traded funds and there is a, a chance that not all mutual funds are going to be highly diversified. Exchange traded funds. Well, exchange traded fund are similar to mutual funds in a number of respects, but they do differ in initial share distribution. They reflect a broad base stock index. They're traded like stock, but they usually have lower cost and fees than mutual funds.